Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. There have been many interesting developments this past summer which should be mentioned. First was the release of Unzicker's book. The book now appears in English, French and German. Second, the release of Unzicker's book prompted Steve Crothers to write an article for Nexus magazine based in Australia which has a subscription base of 1.1 million people worldwide. That article appears in the October-November issue and will be available at bookstores throughout North America, Europe, Australia, New Zealand and Asia. It should be out any day. I urge everyone to get a copy and have a read. Third, Patrick Van Rees was recently interviewed by Michael and Anastasia of the Demystifying Science podcast and that video was just released. In that interview, Kirchhoff's Law and the Nature of the Sun was addressed. Patrick is an expert in the chemistry of liquid plasmas and the conversation should be interesting. You might recall that in 2019 Patrick wrote the following relative to the liquid metallic nature of the Sun. This also reminds to the gaseous plasma model of the Sun which has been dominantly used for several past decennia and which soon might be decrowned by the rivaling new liquid model. Speaking of Michael and Anastasia, they are sponsoring their first conference, Demysticon 2024 in Austin, Texas, in conjunction with the upcoming Total Solar Eclipse on Monday, April 8th. Their inaugural Demystify Psi conference will be held on the 7th and 8th of April, so that viewing of the eclipse will occur during the second day. I will be giving a talk along with many other interesting speakers on topics ranging from astrophysics to economics, origins of life, consciousness and comparative mythology. They will limit attendance to about 300 people. Tickets are now available and there is a link below so be sure to reserve your spot. Your support in attending will help ensure that Demystify Psy continues to promote scientific revolutions for years to come. Returning to Alexander Unzicker, he released a video a few days ago on coronal mass ejections and highlighted that for him this was the strongest evidence for a liquid sun. Everyone needs to see that video. Of course, Unzicker is free to decide what is the most compelling evidence for a liquid sun in his mind. In fact, that is one of the reasons that the 40 line of evidence paper was produced. Different lines of evidence will appeal to different people, depending on their background. That is great. For instance, for many people, the ripples on the pond is the strongest line of evidence and I have covered the problem twice in videos. Such behavior cannot logically be explained in the standard model without suspension of disbelief. Attempts to calculate the ripples in the standard model claim to have been successful, as can be seen in this paper. But the reality remains that such calculations require the presence of a reflective surface within the sun something which cannot exist in the standard model as I had discussed in this video. Such modeling also grossly underestimates the magnitude of the event by a factor of 10 and could not account for the fact that the velocity of the ripples increased over time. So to claim that such behavior was predicted by calculations is a distortion of what is actually possible for the standard model. Again, there are no reflective surfaces in a gaseous plasma sun. So calculations based on non-existent reflective surfaces are without merit. I first brought up these ripples on the sun long ago in the New York Times article and have returned to it over and over again. In the 40 proofs paper I had noted that the bright regions corresponded to displacement towards the detector. Unfortunately that was an error on my part as bright regions actually implied displacement away from the detector. That was corrected in this video, but now I make it clear to everyone. It makes no difference relative to the fact that these images provide some of the strongest evidence that the Sun has a true surface comprised of condensed matter. Still for me as a spectroscopist, the most important line of evidence for a liquid Sun will always be the thermal spectrum. This spectrum cannot be properly accounted for by gaseous plasmas as I discussed last year in this video and address in depth in this paper. It can also not be accounted for by the electric plasma sun despite claims to the contrary. The only feasible explanation is that the sun is condensed matter as only condensed matter in the laboratory has ever produced such a spectrum. 
Again, whatever mechanism takes place in graphite and soot must also take place on the sun. The only option is the vibration of atomic nuclei within the confines of a lattice, as I have repeatedly stated. Mechanisms invoked in the standard model or for an electric sun have nothing whatsoever to do with the production of a black body radiation spectrum on Earth, and those are therefore scientifically invalid. I remind everyone that how a plasma is produced makes no difference relative to its inability to generate a thermal spectrum. Plasmas always produce distortions like emission spikes even when a continuous spectrum is present. Furthermore, in all instances, any thermal spectrum simultaneously observed with a gaseous plasma is associated with adjacent condensed matter, not with the plasma itself. One often hears astronomers state that optically thick gaseous plasmas can produce black body radiation. However, this is a circular argument, as any gas which is optically thick will be black body by definition. The problem is that gases are never optically thick. To claim otherwise is to impart on gases black body behavior which they do not possess. Optically thick gaseous plasmas simply do not exist. Only condensed matter is optically thick over a broad range of frequencies. Now in closing, I wanted to highlight one thing. When the ideas which gave birth to the standard model were first being developed 150 years ago, our only means of acquiring an image of the sun was in the optical range. The range of wavelengths was extremely limited. As a result, it was easy for solar physicists to claim that the surface was nothing but an optical illusion. The problem is that now we can view the sun at every frequency from the radio range to the x-ray and gamma range. In every case we see evidence for a real surface. Not only that, the so-called optical illusion also behaves like a real surface. The sun rings like a bell at very low frequency and that requires reflections at a surface. Ripples are being produced because ponds have real surfaces in the presence of gravitational forces. The doubling of signal intensity at the limb in the x-ray and gamma region also provides evidence for a surface. The list goes on and on. At this point, astronomers need to embrace the fact that the sun has a real surface. The evidence is pointing in this direction and it is simply overwhelming. It is time for the next generation of scientists to rally behind the condensed nature of the stars and with that bring a new dawn to astronomy. Well, that is all for now. Next, we move to the consequences of lattice structure in the sun and the stars and also relative to the formation of the planets. If you enjoyed the video today, promote the channel, mention the video to your local astronomy club and to your friends, support me with a like and subscribe for more videos as we look more closely at the sun, the stars and beyond. Comments are always welcome down below. And I'll see you soon on the next video.